Hello, everybody. Um, today I am at Epson today, so uh, Mr. Smith will be something for you. But I wanted to give you a little lesson to kind of keep the, keep the ball rolling with this unit. Um, so hopefully this will be quick. Um, unit 5, Lesson 1, Investigation 4, Solving Quadratic Functions. Now, if I look at all three of these functions, they all have an x squared, meaning they have how many solutions? Two. All right, every one of these functions has two solutions. They all have two solutions. Every single one. All right, a through, a through C all has two solutions. The reason I know that is because of the x squared term. That tells me that there's two possible answers that'll make each of these equations work. Now, there are simple steps to solving all three of these. Um, two of them require factoring, one of them requires algebra. Now, looking at, looking at our choices, which two require factoring and which one requires algebra? Easy way to think about it. Which one could you solve right now and which one do we have to learn a new process? All right, you probably guessed it. B and C require factoring. A, we can solve with algebra. So let's start with A since it'll be familiar for us. So if I'm going to solve 4x squared minus 12 equals 4 using algebra, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything that doesn't have an x in it to the other side. So I'm going to move the minus 12 to the other side by adding it to both sides. So we get 4x squared equals 16. Now we're going to divide both sides by 4. So we get x squared equals 4. And lastly, to get rid of the squared, what are we going to do? Right, square root. So by square root 4, we get plus or minus 2. So our two solutions, one is positive 2, the other one is negative 2. So when there is only one x term, we can use algebra. All right, the other types, B and C, in order to solve these, there's a little process. Right? In order to solve these, there's a little process. So we'll write our steps over here. So steps to solving. Now, if we look at A, B, and C, the biggest difference between the three equations is in A, we have only one x term, okay, and x squared. In B, we have x squared and x. And in C, we have x squared in x. Whenever we have two x terms that do not have the same power, we need to factor. So right here we're at the step two solving. When there are two x terms. Now, it doesn't mean two times x. That means two different x terms, like x and x squared. All right, so step one is get everything that it's x's, x squareds, so x's, x squared, and c on, on one side. Get everything x, x squared, and c on one side. Let me see that c. There we go. So we're going to work with b first. We have 3x squared plus 3x minus equals negative 6x. So to get everything to one side, we're now going to add 6x. We then get 3x squared plus 9x equals 0. Now, if you remember from yesterday, this is one of our special cases. There's only two x terms, or everything has an x, and everything also has a 3. So that means I can factor out a 3x. And we get x. So I take a 3 out of both, so 3 out of here gives me x. 3x out of here leaves me with 3. So step two is to factor. So based on the last three days in class, we should all know how to factor. Now, step three is to find our solutions by setting our factors equal to zero. So find two solutions 
by a setting your factors equal to zero. Now the reason why I set them equal to zero is because this whole thing, the whole equation equals zero right there. So to solve this, to find my two solutions, we're going to set 3x equal to zero and x plus 3 equal to zero. And you're probably thinking, we just took a very difficult problem and turned it into simple algebra, all by factoring. So 3x equals zero, I solve for x by dividing by 3. So x equals zero. x plus 3 equals zero, I solve by subtracting 3 from both sides. And I get x equals negative 3. So kind of tie this into what we talked about before. This 3x squared plus 3x equals negative 6. When I rewrote it as 3x squared plus 9x, that made a parabola. This parabola will cross the x-axis at 0 and negative 3. Let's kind of tie it in. That's not really the, the whole idea of the lesson, but that's how it kind of ties back to what we've done before. Now, if, if you remember, we did a process like this when, when we were learning what our m and m terms are. are when we were learning what our m and, m and n terms were for the parabola. All right. All right, so uh, if there's any questions about that, um, I'm sure Mr. Smith can answer them for you, or you can come see me on uh, Monday morning and we can talk about that. All right, so give you a little bit of time to take a look at that. All right, so we solved A, solved A, we solved B. Now let's look at solving C. Now C is 2x squared plus 7x equals negative 6. How many x terms are there? 1, 2. Got an x squared and an x. Two x terms. So I can use these same steps over here. All right? Same steps. First thing, get everything on one side. Right? Get everything on one side. So it's probably easier to move the 6 over here versus moving these two over there. So to get the 6 over, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So we get 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals 0. Everything's on one side. Now I'm going to factor. Okay? If I look, I can't take a 2 out of everything, so I'm just going to factor this as is. So we have our 2x squared term and our 6 term. Factors of 2x squared are 2x and x. I don't need to worry about the negative factors because these are all positive. Factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. I'm assuming you guys did those along with me because you were so excited about doing that the other day as well. So these are my factors of 2x squared and 6. Now I've got to find the combination that adds to 7x, just like we've done the past couple days. So let's try, the, let's try that first one. 2x times 1 plus x times 6. 2x is 2x. x times 6 is 6x. 2x plus 6x is 8x. Is that right? No. So let's try the next. Let's switch our uh, six and our and our one. So two times six plus x times one. Two times six is twelve. X times one is thirteen. Is that right? Nope. Let's try the next one. Two x times two plus x times three. Two times two is four. Three times one is three. So we get our 7x, and that one is correct. So now I can continue to factor. We drop down our x's, cross over our other terms. We get 2x plus 3 and x plus 2. Now in the interest of space, I'm going to erase our factoring process. So if you want to write that down, write down real quick, or you can pause it. Okay. So remember, these, this was, these were the factors of that. So I can just take this equation and rewrite it as 2x plus 3 and x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. So I have factored. Now I find my two solutions by setting each factor equal to 0 because I have a 0 right there. So 2x plus 3 equals 0 and 
x plus 2 equals 0. Once again, turn a difficult problem into simple algebra now. So let's start with this one. First step, subtract 3 from both sides. We get 2x equals negative 3. Then divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 3 over 2. So one solution is x equals negative 3 over 2. The other solution, we subtract 2 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 2. So there are my two solutions to that problem. Now, if you want to go back and check, you can plug in negative 3 for x, or negative 3 halves for x to see if it equals negative 6, or negative 2 for x to see if it equals negative 6. And it should. And that, that works with all, the, with all the problems we did today. If you need to check your answer, you can always plug in your x values back into the equations. All right, are there any questions before I move on? I asked Mr. Smith those. All right, so to recap, to recap, which of these could we solve using algebra? A, right? So, when there's one x, we can solve using algebra. When there is one x term, solve with algebra. Right? The ones we had to solve by factoring were b and c, because they had two x terms. So, when there two x terms solve by factoring. Kind of a recap of, of what we talked about today. Um, this video will be posted online so you can watch it whenever you need to. Um, hopefully you guys watched it all as a class. And today's lesson, or today's uh, assignment, so today's assignment, page 340, check your understanding, let's do today at the end of the hour. Page 341, 1, A and B, 2 and 3. Those we do Monday at the end of the hour. We'll have some time, we'll have some time on Monday to work on those. Also, if you finish this up in page 341, what we talked about today doesn't make sense, work on your OEO. All right? Also, work on your OEO this weekend. You need to do that. Um, I'll be back on Monday. Hopefully things are going well. If you have any questions, Mr. Smith is well equipped to, uh, to explain math to you guys. So thanks a lot. Have a great, great weekend.